Have a great day. Hey, hey, cop dirty, stop with the dirty. Hey, hey. So this is from Sweden, this one here from Pakistan, Korea, Pakistan again, Australia, from China, this is from Ukraine, this one here from Indonesia, Canada. We are here to make science great again. This is a campaign that We Know Time launched in Paris in April this year. defend science because we are currently under attack. My name is Samia, I'm from the Amazon, and without science we've got nothing. Would you trust a politician to prescribe you medicines? If not, why would you trust them on climate change? We actually just got the COP presidency to proudly wear the cap. I, as president of COP30, will therefore create two roadmaps. One on halting and reverting deforestation, another to transitioning away from fossil fuels in a just, orderly, and equitable manner. fight back we need some facts we need understanding and we need truth and this is what science provides please bring the top science in the world to COP30 because we want the science to influence negotiators you're actually four million years back to find a planet with an equivalent heat level on planet earth the ocean is also uh, actually holding not only a lot of energy, but also carbon from the emissions. And when the temperature of the ocean surface is increased, the buffering effect or capacity is reduced. To divert our attention from what really needs to be done. And for the very same reasons, um, it's also a threat to democracy. That's very good. We need it to go down to zero. But it's financed by pumping more and more oil. Flying here to Brazil, it was quite devastating to see, I mean, the chestboard pattern of cut down rainforest and how it's being harvested systematically. Extending forest is more valuable than land for cattle. Science is very clear. We need to leave fossil fuels in the ground. So I'll start towards that camera and then turn to Tim. Yes, thank you. Our role is that we help to amplify what's going on here to our broadcast community where we reach more than 20 million viewers throughout the whole COP. And we will soon see how we do it. essential that others stand with us, other countries stand with, with the activists in the United States um, and demand an end to the bullying and stand up. Uh, here is where my colleagues are sitting and doing the magic behind the cameras. And uh, here is one of our uh, moderator, Katarina Rolstotter. I'm just sitting here writing an article to Forbes based on one of the interviews we did here. Presta attention, mundo. Vocês estão comendo soja a troco de destruição da natureza. Whenever there's a storm, a climate disaster, we need to raise our voices and 
point the finger at who's responsible, which is the fossil fuel industry. It's the big oil and gas corporations who've made $2.8 billion in profit every single day for 50 years. And they've known all of that time that they were burning our planet. We need to start saying it and we need to hold them accountable. We need to raise taxes on them. We need to sue them. We need to get them to pay for these climate disasters. countries across the global north and the global south have joined hands for a clear roadmap to move away from fossil fuels. <laughs> we live. Adios. The crisis of climate change is driven by our addiction and our dependence on fossil fuels. Since 2010, the little efforts that we have made in phasing down coal have already saved 160,000 lives every year. I'm here with Benoit Bassin. Today we still see about 2.5 million deaths that occur each year from the burning of fossil fuels that contaminate the air that we breathe. Hi guys. Anybody want to lift? Of course. Oh. Great, okay. Where do you come from then? So me, I come from the main branch, the branch coming from COM29 from Azerbaijan. And I okay. cycle from Azerbaijan to Lisbon in Portugal to take a sailboat. I... So during a COP meeting, you have climate on top of the agenda in the whole world. Phasing down and out fossil fuels is all hot air without national roadmaps on how to do it. I think what's really been brought home to me at this COP is that businesses are already starting to feel the impacts of climate change. Change is not linear, it's exponential. We are just outside the media soon. You have the big plenary where you had the negotiations going on at the other side of the corridor. You have the other world media like CNN, BBC, uh, Bloomberg. They are going live, but not as much as we are doing. And it's a real challenge. You don't hear it, but it's 80 decibel from the big fan in the background. And uh, you hear thunder and rainstorm. It's very hard to say, hear what everyone says, but with this amazing team you see behind me that is working non-stop to pull an operation off like this. We have hundreds of speakers, scientists, policy makers, ministers, business leaders. And 10 years ago, about 20% of new cars sold in Norway were fully electric vehicles. Today it's 100%. Transition energetic in terms of the, the avance de las energías renovables uno podría decir si uno se quedara solo ahí check yeah. vamos muy bien we are no longer waiting we are implementing local solutions at our own level to drive uh, global and, and sustainable impact then i speak to the asian development bank about uh, about the future of of COPs, and then I have um, uh, a session on uh, information integrity. So as a diplomat, I love the left, I love the right. I just uh, try to see how can I work with them best. So the left is wonderful to have social focused ambitions and all those kind of things, but the, but the right is very good in implementation. So we moved in the Netherlands with a very clear climate ambition, and we're now moving in implementation, and with the right-wing government, I could sell it by saying we need energy security, we need, which is often renewable energy. Scientists need healthy democratic institutions in order to protect both their personal freedoms and their professional integrity. In order to pass from fear to courage and to action, we have to accept the fear. We don't have time. Yeah. The clock is ticking. I'll pass this off to Zoran Mamdani, the mayor-elect of New York City. The fragrance of The people who are living in uh, Amazonian forests and uh, in Amazonian part of this uh, continent, they are really uh, connected with uh, the, this nature, this rainforest, and this plant of this forest uh, for every day. I think the biggest mistake humanity have done is when we uh, divorced nature.
we come from nature and nature is us. And yet we are being told that we have to deny the impact of our impact on nature, that we have to deny the importance of nature through the geopolitics and the power games that are playing out right now as all of us are here at this COP30. On one trip to the Amazon, I ended up staying in a tree house. Uh, and now if I say tree house, uh, this is not what we may have built ourselves when we were kids, um, but 20 meters high uh, in one of these majestic trees uh, in the forest. And uh, you have at night all kinds of animals coming, uh, monkeys jumping on the roof. Uh, there's, it's very noisy, actually. Uh, you hear a lot going on and uh, you don't quite know because you're not familiar with it. Uh, so it's uh, an interesting experience. Uh, you feel you lose control a little bit over what's going on. Right now we are in one of the plenary rooms here at COP30 to discuss the action agenda, which is sort of a complementary track to the negotiations. Even if we get a negative outcome, I think this COP will be a tipping point. We're here at the Turkish Pavilion to congratulate Turkey. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And we want to give you a gift because during this, this COP, for We Don't Have Time, we have been sharing a very strong message that I'm sure Turkey also would like to share next year at the COP. In Colombia next year, in April, is a meeting for the coalition of the willing for all the countries that are supporting a non-fossil fuel proliferation treaty, a concrete plan to phase out fossil fuel. And I'm really hopeful what I see here it's the start of a new era and it's the end of the oil era. So thanks for tuning in and let's see you again from Colombia where the action are going to happen. So we would like to give you quite a lot of caps <laughs> for the Australian people. They're going to work to prepare the COP. Well, look, I think that's really important. And one thing that uh, Minister Bowen, who is, is li likely to be the negotiating president. And please make sure that Bowen gets a cap. I will absolutely do that. I, I uh, will be seeing him tomorrow and I will put it on his head myself. <laughs> make science great again. Yes, now. Do it now. <laughs>I can give this hat to someone else after. I would want to give it to the kids in my elementary school because that's where I fell in love with science.